The Link Riser Myth on Scale RC Rock Crawlers. Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the video. You might be here because you saw one of my prior videos, The Definitive Guide to Anti-Squat on RC Crawlers, or you may have heard me say somewhere that Link Risers won't help you climb. Perhaps you just want to learn, or perhaps you were outraged that the physics I cite don't correlate with your personal experience. Either way, I've designed a couple of demonstrations that should help us get to the bottom of it. First, let's review the theory. Quick recap, what is anti-squat? Anti-squat can be thought of as a countermeasure of force. Rear linkage can be used to counteract internal forces from acceleration that would otherwise upset the balance or the attitude of the chassis. This is done by deploying a proportional counterforce that either compresses or extends the rear shocks to keep the chassis level. With 100% anti-squat, your chassis remains level under acceleration. This is the standard calculation diagram that is accepted by suspension engineers worldwide. The physics principle that needs emphasis in the context of an RC crawler is acceleration or dynamic weight shift. The biggest point where I see people getting confused is the topic of acceleration. Anti-squat is a dynamic response. Slow crawling is basically a static problem that any first year engineering student should be able to draw with a free body diagram. In the context of anti-squat, there has to be significant acceleration to cause a dynamic weight shift. Your wheels have to accelerate out from underneath your chassis powerfully enough that the chassis remains behind momentarily. If that's not happening, you simply are not in the realm of anti-squat. If you're slowly creeping up a hill, the same thing applies. Your wheels have to go uphill faster than your body and create that dynamic shift. That's when anti-squat becomes engaged. If you're slowly creeping up a hill, there simply isn't enough acceleration to put you in the realm that your link riser settings would make any difference. There must be acceleration to create a significant dynamic weight shift on the chassis. Check out my comprehensive anti-squat video for an in-depth explanation. You should really watch that first. So what's the myth? The myth I hear frequently in RC crawler forums is that rear linkage can be used to push the front end down on steep climbs. Let's find out if this is the case on a slow moving RC crawler. Remember, acceleration is a change in velocity. No change, no acceleration. No acceleration, no anti-squat possible. Let's talk about rear torque. Newton's third law, for every action or force, there is an equal and opposite reaction. In this case, the rear axle housing rotates opposite and equal to the rotation of the wheels. This rear torque lifts up the front end. This rear torque eventually results in a wheelie where the front wheel lifts off the ground with zero weight on the front wheel. The reaction forces from the axle housing rotational loads look like this. The upper link is pulled, the lower link is pushed, and that translates into the chassis rotating and lifting. There are really no other physical mechanisms that can push the front end down. The front of the vehicle can only be pulled upwards. Now let's see this principle in action. Double-blind testing, a scientific approach. 
What we're going to do now is called a double blind test. It's the most scientifically rigorous approach you can take to testing. Double blind means myself, the driver, doesn't know what setting the anti-squad is in. The double blind part is that the person who sets up the car doesn't know what the anti-squad setting is. The reason being is I got my friend who doesn't know anything about RC cars to change the pivots at the anti-squad. So he doesn't know what each setting means and I don't know which setting you put it in. Then we'll see what happens on the traction board. Here's the first demonstration, rear torque. I've made this little board here to uh, secure the rear wheels. So it'll simulate perfect traction without any forward motion. Anytime you're doing a test, you want to try to isolate the variables of interest. In this case, we are isolating linkage geometry and drive torque. We are eliminating acceleration, weight shift, and traction from the equation. Baselines. Low anti-squat, baseline test number one. Low anti-squat, baseline test number two. High anti-squat baseline number one. High anti-squat baseline number two. Double blind trial A. Blind test number two. High anti squat setting. Double blind trial B. Blind test number two. You can clearly see both the torque around the rear wheel and torque twist. Torque twist is what's causing the front right wheel to lift up quicker. To me, there is no discernible difference between these trials. If you think there is a four bar linkage design that can actually push the front end down, I'd love to see it. This experiment's super easy to do. You can try it at home and uh, let's see what you got. Demonstration two, climbing. This is a classic traction board. I stapled down some grip tape and I put a lot of support underneath the board to make sure it was flat top to bottom and left to right. I set the angle to 64 and a half degrees because I know this is the absolute flip over limit for this vehicle. Baselines. Low anti-squat baseline test number one. High anti-squat baseline test.
Double Blind Trial A. High anti squat setting. Double blind trial B. low anti-squat setting. The link riser setting produced no discernible difference. As you can see, I really couldn't tell a difference between the two settings. This is just one vehicle, but it's pretty middle of the road and it performed as the hypothesis predicted, even in the blind test where the driver could not be a factor. If you think there is something inaccurate about the test vehicle or it's not real world, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. If you truly believe that a link riser made your vehicle climb better, let's test it. You can duplicate these tests. It's pretty simple. You can send me a video, and I may feature on the site with an analysis reaction video. If you have ideas for other tests, leave it in the comments. Or, if you are in the San Francisco Bay Area, you can come to my lab. We'll test it together. Alternatively, if you can part with your vehicle for a couple days, I'll pay the shipping, send it to my lab, I'll test it, and ship it back. Now, I honestly don't think anyone will take me up on that, but the offer stands. Let's work together and develop some better science for tuning and rely less on feelings and anecdotes. So why do so many people believe link risers help them climb steeper and kill new lines that they couldn't do previously? Well, it's not anti-squat, but I do have some ideas on what may be going on. I'll share my thoughts in an upcoming video.